in the area of intimate partner violence. Until the 1990s, we were basically making no distinctions amongst types of violence, uh, sometimes distinguishing between mild and severe violence in terms of the severity of the acts involved, but basically lumping together all intimate partner violence as if it were all the same. Um, I began to think that there were some strange, some anomalies in the literature that suggested to me that there might be some really different interpersonal dynamics involved uh, in intimate partner violence and that different kinds of research were getting at different kinds of intimate partner violence. For example, there was a research literature that seemed to show that intimate partner violence was gender symmetric in terms of perpetration, that men and women were equally violent and in intimate relationships. A whole other literature that seemed to indicate that men were the primary perpetrators, clearly the primary perpetrators. And the solution to this turned out to be the now pretty well established fact that there are some really dramatically different kinds of intimate partner violence. By far the most common kind of intimate partner violence is what I call situational couple violence. It's violence uh, that is embedded in a pattern in which a couple has conflicts that turn into arguments that escalate to verbal aggression and ultimately to physical violence. Um, uh, probably one in eight American couples experience that kind of violence in any particular year. For most of them, it's one incident. It's not serious violence. They're distressed at what's happened. They deal with it themselves and it never happens again. For others, it can be extremely serious. It can be chronic violence as arguments escalate regularly in their relationship, re escalating sometimes to very serious, even homicidal violence. So the interpersonal dynamic is one of conflict that escalates to physical violence. Either or both partners can be violent in that kind of intimate partner violence. Sometimes it's just the man, sometimes just the woman, sometimes both. Remember, that's by far the most common kind of intimate partner violence. The uh, second major uh, type of intimate partner violence is what I call intimate terrorism. Lately, it's been being called uh, coercive uh, controlling violence because uh, when I've been working with lawyers and judges, they say, hey, we can't go into court and call this terrorism. Um, that would just be too disturbing in the court setting. So they they call it coercive controlling violence. I'm still calling it intimate terrorism because it involves one partner terrorizing the other one in order to take virtually complete control over her and the relationship. And I use the pronoun uh, carefully because in heterosexual relationships, this kind of violence is perpetrated almost entirely by men. It involves a general pattern of power and control in which the controlling partner uses both violent and nonviolent means to attempt to take uh, virtually complete control over his partner. Um, this is the kind of violence that we see in, in agencies. The police data, the hospital data, the shelter data um, all indicate that this is perpetrated primarily by men. And it's the kind that we had focused on in the battered women's movement because that's what we were seeing in the shelters. And so this kind of violence came to be the defining pattern for the term domestic violence. When somebody involved in the shelter movement or the police talks about domestic violence, this is typically what they're thinking of. Um, and so there's been some confusion in the literature because we, some people say the family conflict theorists use the term domestic violence to refer to all kinds of intimate partner violence. Um, in uh, in uh, people who are intervening in violence, use the term primarily to focus on intimate terrorism. Now, there's a third kind of violence perpetrated primarily by women. Uh, I call it violent resistance. It's the violence that arises when someone finds that they're living with an intimate terrorist and they resist the controlling violence of their partner with violence of their own. This kind of violence in heterosexual relationships tends to happen fairly early um, in the control Con, uh, in reaction to the controlling violence and declines over time because of the size and strength differences and because of the determination of the intimate terrorist to gain control, sometimes violent, in many cases, violent resistance can lead to the, an escalation of the intimate terrorist violence 
So the violent resistor desists and turns to other means to try to mitigate the violence or escape from the relationship. So what the research is showing is that there are huge differences among these three major types of intimate partner violence and that our interventions in them have to be quite different.